All right, so chapter three foundations. We're gonna be going over sets, Venn diagrams, and two-way tables. So the definition of a set is just a collection of objects. So we call those members or elements. And the notation we use for sets is the curly braces. So we'll surround our elements or members separated by comma with the curly braces. If we use the ellipses, it just indicates that the set is too long to list all of them out individually. And also when an element or member is in a set, we'll use the symbol that looks like that E. And it just shows that five, well, for this example, that five is in the set one, five, seven, nine. So again, that little E just means that the character before it is in the set listed after it. So here are some sets. Um, so the ATP top 10 players, which are Djokovic, Nadal, Team, Federer, Medvedev, Sissipas, Zverev, Bertin, Monfi, Batista, Agut. So that is the list of the top 10 ATP, which is the men's professional tennis players. And so it's okay that we write out all 10 here. Similarly, we could have the set of all capital letters. And we also have the set of all even numbers. So notice here in even numbers, we use the ellipses on the front and back because this is an infinite list. So of course I cannot list them all. So subsets are themselves a set and it would be considered a subset. So A is a subset of B if every member of A is also a member of B. So let's look at the notation. We write this kind of sideways U to show that A is a subset of B. So let's look at the example then. If A is the set of all mammals, and B is the set of all animals, then A is a subset of B, right? So every mammal is also an animal. And to look at a Venn diagram of that, we would just draw the larger set B and it contains the smaller set A, which is mammals. So let's talk about subsets a bit more. So here we have mammals, right? So dolphins, meerkats, cows, cats, dogs, humans, etc. And in animals, that includes all animals. So that could be chickens, butterflies, sharks, ants, wasps, etc. So we notice that every mammal is an animal, but not every animal is a mammal. Like certainly chickens are not mammals, butterflies are not mammals. So while we do have the structure here that A is a subset of B, it does not mean that B is a subset of A. Intersections. So intersections require two sets. So if you have set A and set B, then the intersection is itself a subset where each member of the intersection is both a member of A and of B. And so the notation here is the upside down U. So let's look at this example where A is the set of San Jacinto students and B is the set of all people who work full time. So if I take the intersection of these two sets, then any member of this set, A intersect B, has to be a member of set A, meaning that they're a San Jacinto student, and they also have to be a member of set B, which means they also have to work full time. So A intersect B is the set of all San Jacinto students who work full time. And a Venn diagram representation of these two sets and their intersection would look this way. So the intersection is where they overlap. If I'm not in the intersection, but I'm still in A, right? So now I'm in A, but I'm not in B, then that means I'm still a San Jacinto student, but I don't work full time. Because if I did work full time, I would be in this intersection area. Similarly, if I'm in B, but not in the intersection, meaning I'm in B and I'm not in A, then that just means I'm a full-time worker who doesn't attend uh, San Jacinto. So this 
again, this middle area, this overlap is representative of A intersect B. It contains all of San Jacinto students who work full time. All right, so let's do another example. So let's let A be the set of all red cards. And let's let B be the set of all face cards. So that's going to be jacks, queens, and kings. So which cards would be in the set A intersect B? So the way that we can do this is we can identify where all the red cards are. And then we can go ahead and also identify where all of the face cards are. And we just want to look at where they overlap. So we can see the overlap highlighted in yellow. So that gives us jack of hearts, queen of hearts, king of hearts, jack of diamonds, queen of diamonds, and king of diamonds. So it's all the red cards that are also face cards. Let's look at this other example. It looks similar. So A is still the set of all red cards, but now B is the set of all black cards. So we want to know which cards are in the set A intersect B. So highlight all the red cards, there they are, and then highlight all of the black cards. And to find out what cards are in the intersection of A and B, we have to look for the overlap. But A and B don't overlap. So this is what we call the empty set. The empty set is the set that contains no elements. So since we have no overlap here, there's no card in this deck that is both red and black. The intersection is the empty set and you write it as the zero with the strike through it. So unions, again, similar to intersections, you requires two sets, but for unions, the union is a set where each member has to be a member of A or a member of B. So remember intersections is, has to be a member of A and has to be a member of B. Union is has to be a member of A or has to be a member of B. So intersection and unions or. That's how they go together. So we write the intersection um, just with the upside down version of the inter, sorry, we write the union, it's a typo, as the upside down version of the intersection symbol. So this should say union, apologies. All right, so let's go over the same example. We've got A is the set of our Sanjak students and then B is the set of full-time workers, right? So now we wanna know about A union B. So it's going to be the set of all people who are either Sanjak students or who work full-time. So the setup looks the same, right? Same Venn diagram. But now what's happening is that because I can be in either A or B, it's actually the whole area. Right, so this left area is Sanjak students who don't work full time. So that satisfies being in A. The middle area represents students who go to Sanjak and work full time. So that certainly satisfies because they're a member of A and B. And then this far right area represents people who are full time workers but don't attend Sanjak. So all the people I just described are either Sanjak or work full time. Some of them are both. All right, so let's do the similar example with unions now. So set of all red cards, set of all face cards. So what is the union? So just highlight your set A, highlight your set B. And for union, you're gonna take all of it, not just the overlap. You're gonna take everything that either is A or B. And so now your union is all of the red cards plus the addition of Oh, I highlighted the wrong area. This should be Jack, Queen, King of clubs and spades. All right, so now let's take another example where we have the set of all red cards is A and the set of all black cards is B. In the intersection, we saw that A intersect B was empty because there was no overlap. So for the union, there's still no overlap, but since it's an or situation, I highlight everything that's in A and I also highlight everything that's in B. And so everything that I've highlighted represents the union. So the union is just all of the cards. All right, so next we have complements. So the complement of a set A 
is just the set containing elements that are not A, right? So you have set A and then you have set not A and not A is the complement. But to contrast what is A and what is not A, you need a universal set or kind of like a background or a canvas. So there's three ways that we're gonna see the complement expressed as far as notation. So it's A and it has a little superscript C or it's going to be A with a bar on top or it's going to be A prime or A apostrophe. Those all mean the same thing. So let's go back to our example where we have the set of all San Jacinto students and our universal set S or our background set is going to be the set of all college students. So A prime then is the set of all college students who don't go to San Jack. So let's look at that. We've got a Venn diagram here. So blue circle S represents all college students. Certainly all San Jacinto students, since it's a college, would be a subset of all college students. And so A prime is just everything in S but outside of A. So this blue highlighted region represents not A or A complement. All right, so let's let A be the set of all red cards again. And the universal set this time is the set of all 52 cards. So which cards are in the set A prime? So here we have all of our red cards, we've identified A. And to determine what A prime or A complement is, we just highlight everything that's not in A. So again, the complement is just not A. And so A prime is all the black cards. So now let's see if we can kind of combine complements, intersections, and unions. So here we have sets A and B, and we have universal set S. So the universal set is just all the numbers, one, two, three, four, et cetera, up till 12. B is a subset of S. It's the even numbers between one and 12. And A is also a subset of S. It's just randomly chosen one, two, three, seven, eight, eleven. And we want to talk about which elements are in the set A complement intersect B. So to set this up first, get your universal space situated. Right, so we understand that S here is the universal set. Typically we draw sets with circles or ovals or ellipses the universal set typically gets a rectangular area to denote that it's the universal set. So next what we're going to do is we're going to draw set A, which contains these values, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11. Then we're also going to draw set B, but B and A have some overlap. We can see that they share a 2, they share an 8. So when I draw set B, it's going to overlap a little bit with A, in particular, they're going to share these elements two and eight. So we can see here that two belongs to set A and it also belongs to set B. Similarly, eight belongs to set A and it also belongs to set B. Notice that three, seven, one, and 11, they're in A and they are not in B. Four, six, 10, and 12 are in B, but they're not in A. So that's why we have only the particular shared elements here in this intersection area. So now that we have our Venn diagram set up, well, actually, I think we need to do a couple more things. We haven't listed everything in set S, right? We've got A, we've got B, but notice that five and nine are in the universal set, but they don't appear in set A or B. So the way you denote that is you draw them in set S, but not in either of the circles for A and B. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to determine where is A complement. So it's everything that's not A, right? So I take A and I just highlight everything around it, everything that's not an A. And then I'm going to also determine what is set B and I'm going to highlight set B. So set B here highlighted in blue And now to take the intersection, I have to figure out where this pink-orange 
area intersects with the blue area. And we can see that it's shaded by both colors here. So it contains 4, 6, 10, and 12. So A complement intersect B is exactly kind of this moon shape that was covered by both A prime and B. And so that is the intersection of A complement and B. So how many elements are in the set A complement intersect B? There are four, and they are four, six, 10, and 12. So let's try this again with an intersection. And yes, I'm intentionally switching up the notation. So in one example, I use the little C to denote complement. Here, I'm gonna use prime. In the homework, you may see the bar, but they all mean complement. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set up my universal set S. I'm gonna draw A and list its members. I'm gonna draw B and list its members and make sure to include appropriately the values that are in the intersection. Right, so if I had a two over here and a two over here, that's not appropriate because that two appears in both sets. It needs to be listed one time in the intersection. And so now I'm going to highlight set A and I'm going to highlight set B complement or B prime. So again, B prime is everything that's not B. So it's everywhere outside of B. And because I'm taking the union this time, I don't need just this place where they both got shaded. I'm going to take anywhere that they're shading because if I'm shaded here, I'm an A. If I'm shaded here, I'm an A and B prime. And if I'm shaded here, then I'm just in B prime. And I, all three of those constitute being in the union. So A union B prime looks like this. So notice for the diagram, what I did was I just killed off that four, six, 10, and 12, because those aren't in the set A union B prime. So A union B prime consists of one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, eleven, And the number of elements in A union B prime is eight. So this little n in front of the set indicates that you're telling us how many elements are in that set. So in the first line here, I'm listing the set I'm describing the set, I'm saying what's in the set, and here I'm just telling you there's eight things in the set. All right, so next we have two-way tables and their Venn diagrams. So on the top left, we have a two-way table. It shows baby's birth weight status against mother's smoking status. So here we see that we've got smokers and non-smokers, and low weight babies and normal weight babies. So this table represents the number of babies born and it tells us whether or not they were low or normal weight and whether or not they were smoker, had a mother who smoked or didn't. So if I wanted to know how many people, by people I guess it's babies, are represented in this table, what I want to do is just add up all the entries here. So adding them all up I get 350. So 350 baby people are represented in this table. Next, I may want to know how many low weight babies were born to mothers who smoke. So I go to my low birth weight column, which is here, and it tells me that 18 were born to smoking mothers and 14 were born to non-smoking mothers. So to answer my question, how many low weight babies were born to mothers who smoke, I'm looking at that 18. So I'm in the low birth weight column. And I'm also just looking at the row that has smoker as the mother's smoking status. All right, so next I'm gonna ask how many total babies were born to mothers who smoke. So this is a bit different. I'm gonna go over to mothers who smoke. So that's the first row here. 18 of them had low birth weight babies and 132 of them had normal birth weight babies. So the total number of babies born to mothers who smoke is going to be that 18 plus 132, which is 150. And next, what percentage of babies were born to mothers who smoke? So now I want to take my answer from above, which gives me the total number of babies, and convert it to a percentage. So remember that a percentage is the number of things that you're interested in divided by the total number. 
So you want to take 150, which was the total number of babies born to mothers who smoke, and divide it by the total number of babies represented in this two-way table, which was 350. So 150 over 350 gives me 0 0.4286. I convert to a percentage by moving the decimal over two times, giving me 42.86%. Another fun typo, geez. So let's look at this table. So the yellow rectangle represents the universal set, right? It's like, it's everything, it's all the babies. So the purple circle represents low birth weight and the green circle represents mothers who smoke. And you might be wondering like, wait, shouldn't we have four circles? We should have smoking and non-smoking and low birth weight and um, in high and normal birth weight. But think about this, if you are in the circle low birth weight baby, right? you're in the purple circle of low birth weight. If you're outside the circle, then you would be normal birth weight, right? Because not low birth weight, the complement of low birth weight is normal birth weight. And similarly, if you're in the green circle, you're, you are baby born to a mother who smokes. So if I go outside that green circle, now I'm in the complement of smoking mothers, which is non-smoking mothers. So again, outside the low birth weight circle, normal birth weight, but also outside the green circle, mothers who smoke. So this yellow region represents two things. One, that you are a normal birth weight baby and that your mother didn't smoke. Let's go to the table normal birth weight baby, a non-smoking mother. There's 186 of those. So that's why we represent the 186 here. It's telling us how many babies were born normal birth weight to mothers who don't smoke. So that's one region. Let's see if we can identify low birth weight babies with non-smoking mothers. So I don't wanna have a smoking mother. So that means I need to be outside of the green circle but I do want to be a low birth weight baby. So I need to be inside the purple. So I got to be outside green, inside purple. So that represents this region here. Just this kind of moon region here, right? Not the intersection, just strictly purple. So that's low birth weight babies with non-smoking mothers, which we see there are 14. And notice that it's listed as 14 here. Let's go up to the smoking mothers now. So let's see if we can identify where we have low birth weight babies and a mother who smokes. So this is gonna be low birth weight, purple circle, and smoking mothers, green circle. They overlap here, 18. And notice that's the value we have here. Lastly, we wanna look at normal birth weight babies and a mother who smokes. So if I'm a normal birth weight baby, I'm not, in the purple circle, so I'm in the, the yellow abyss. <laughs> and I also wanna have a mother who smokes. So that's gonna put me here in the green circle. So inside the green circle and not in purple. So that's this other kind of crescent area, this green crescent area, 132. We see that matching up here with our two-way table. So that's it for foundation. Everything we do in chapter three is gonna rely really heavily on understanding sets um, how to combine sets, Venn diagrams, and two-way tables.